Well, I want to talk a little bit today about um, the life cycle of semiconductors and how IP plays into that um, and some of the lessons that uh, we've learned in the past uh, with regards to how important it is for differentiation in our products. So, you know, all semiconductors go through a similar life uh, cycle, whether it's uh, the introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. Um, but the maturity stage is the stage where companies really need to defend um, their market share and maximize the profits when they face competition. And very often, there's an increased competition through differentiation. So as products become more and more standardized, it becomes less and less possible to differentiate. And the loyalty of the end, end customer also becomes diminished. So I truly believe that if we can delay the maturity curve, um, we'll see a longer lasting of, of a product line. And I think there's numerous examples that we can see over time where as the IP that goes into the product becomes standardized and there is the inability to differentiate and the more and more of that product becomes, of the IP in that product becomes standard, then the product itself becomes less differentiated. And as the semiconductor is sold to the end product, the end product becomes less differentiated and so on and so on. And so what you'll see is over time that maturity or that decline will accelerate because more competition, the barrier to entry becomes less. And I think it's something we have to be very concerned about in semiconductors as we look at the IP that we continue to buy and develop is standard, standards based, uh, less and less companies providing that IP, um, which makes it inability for, depending on the segment, the ability again to make a differentiated piece of silicon. You know, one of the data points that's interesting is that the IP market is projected to grow uh, over 17% um, in the next year, in the last year it has, and it continue that trend going forward. Um, but as I believe that as markets mature, the use of third-party IP will go up. And I think that's what these, this data shows. I think the risk that we see is that that is a short time frame, whether maybe the next two, three, four years. But at the end of that time, what we'll see is a decline in use because less chips will be made, less semiconductors will be made because there's less reason to have a lot of companies make silicon because no one can differentiate to get themselves. And the availability of customizable or differential IP becomes, I think, more and more important in this trend so that we can slow down that, mature, that decline curve as we go forward. Now, being unable to customize IP limits differentiation, as I talked about before, whether it's in performance, power, features, cost, and so forth. As everything becomes standardized, then I think the utilization of ASSPs uh, becomes more and more. And a lot of times, depending on the product, utilizing an ASSP is done for a few different reasons. But eventually what it does is it compromises performance, power, feature, and cost because you're making trade-offs to use a standard piece of silicon versus trying to make something that's unique to your application because you can't find enough differentiation to justify why you would do that. Software is a way to differentiate even on ASSP, but the problem with software differentiation, it's a lower barrier to entry. The cost to get into it is, makes it easier for other places around the world, other companies to come in and make products that compete with you. Um, it, does re it reduces the market pricing. It commoditizes things. And eventually what will happen is you'll have less companies making end products, which the IP guy sells to the semiconductor guy who sells to the product guy. If there are less products, there eventually will be less semiconductor companies. Eventually, IP will also be in trouble. So, and the results of this shows that history is very difficult to grow a new market. So we have to really try to expand upon the current markets we're in because it's almost impossible to come up with a new market just you know, out of blue air, out of, uh, out of the sky. And as smaller companies disappear and larger companies get bigger, that will also create less competition. If we look at our largest IP providers today, they continue to buy up smaller and smaller companies and they continue to standardize that IP, um, which makes it extremely difficult for everybody to be able to grasp and, and like I said, differentiate. And as I mentioned already as well, the number of companies will, just, will, will decline. And I think that's bad. Um, as we have less options, 
It makes it more difficult for us to sell a product in the marketplace that allows us to create higher revenues, higher margins, um, which will only happen is we'll have lower, lower revenues and lower margins. And I think this macro trend has already started. Um, as I mentioned with the one piece of data about IP growing, the other is the number of design starts are decreasing. And I think that those two in my mind show that IP, while being standardized, is being purchased because it's easier to get access to. But on the other hand, there's less differentiation for semiconductor companies, the number of design starts are decreasing. Now there's macro trends in the, in the economy and other reasons why people give that this is the case. But I think that the fundamental problem is it's, le it's more difficult to make a product that differentiates you against somebody else. Now when you decide whether to do an ASIC or ASSP, what it comes down to, there's, a, there's many decisions that you need to make. Can I design an ASIC that will allow to bring an ROI to differentiate me in the market? Does the forecast of my ASIC justify the development and the cost I got to put into it? Or is an ASSP meet the majority of my needs? And can I not create enough difference in my ASIC where an ASSP provides enough of what I can do and I can differentiate in software. So at the end of the day you're going to make these choices as you go down the path. Ultimately you want to be able to choose where you can provide enough difference so you can do an ASIC and justify the cost, justify the ROI. The moment you start going down the switching off of ASICs and going down the ASSP path then I think you've hit that decline period in the, in the evolution of that particular product. And it's something you have to, I think we have to be very, very concerned about. As I mentioned, when you choose AS, ASSP, you're already in that downturn. Your core IP is standardized. Your operating systems are stable. And really, the only way you can differentiate is at the application level. And the barrier to entry is not that high for software. It's much, much harder to build a chip. And there's a lot of companies that can write software. And it's a lot less costly. And it's easier to outsource. So unable to justify ASIC development, um, I think, is a, is a red flag that needs to show that, you need, that as a company, you have to look at other places or figure out how you go back in and figure out how to differentiate at a silicon level through, through your IP. So standardization is something that we've seen in the past. And I've, as I mentioned, you know, software is one way to get there. I think a great example of this is the PC industry. If you go back 20, 15, 20 years ago, there was dozens and dozens of PC companies. But the moment that Microsoft and Intel standardized everything that goes into a computer, those companies dwindled. And then they further dwindled by getting purchased by each other. And so as we look at it today, we basically have three big guys, and that's it. And you can see the margins and the revenues erosion out of this market because they are unable to differentiate against each other. They all use the Microsoft operating system and they all use an Intel chipset. And the Intel chipset has everything integrated. There's no, there's no difference in graphics and audio, hard drives, memory, speeds, it's all the same. The only company that's been able to break out of this to a certain extent is Apple. And Apple does it because they have their own operating system and they differentiate in, in factors that, are, that the consumer likes. The system that they have is integrated from end to end. It's a great experience. But when you use a standardized operating system or a standardized chipset, it's very, very difficult to be able to do that. And the HP, Dell, Acer, others, they try to continue to do it, but they struggle. I mean, if you just look at, you can go to the store today and buy a $349 laptop that 10 years ago would cost you $2,000. And you can look at their, their stock price and their revenues and their margins, and they're very, very tough. So as we look at what we do as far as deciding on how we're going to build our next generation IP semiconductors and products, I think this is a key fundamental that we have to keep in mind about not allowing the world to be sucked up by big companies and try to differentiate as much as we can so that we can have a longer life cycle with, within what we're trying to do. So in summary, you know, ex external influences can't be controlled. Um, but we should try the best we can to delay the maturity and the decline of, of our market or our vertical. Always try to some differentiation. Don't take shortcuts just because it's faster to get done because when you do that, eventually it'll catch up to you. Try not to settle and strive for innovation as much as possible. 
Standardization opens the door for competition, and standardization ultimately will take the value and margin out of the products.